so thrilled with Founders Corner today because we have Melissa Berry with us and she is the founder. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. She's here with us, but she's a founder of Cancer Fashionista. And so many of you have probably somewhere along the line have uh, either read about or heard about Melissa and the things that she's been doing out there in the world of helping others in, in the cancer world. So I'm going to have her tell her story, but I'm just thrilled that she's here with me and a part of Immunopology here. So, so first of all, I want to say welcome, Melissa. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't know what, I, see, I, I talk so much, but I'm speechless. Thank you for such an incredible introduction. Truly. It means the world to me coming from you. Truly. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, and 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 thank you for being here and being a part of this journey with uh, with me. I know in our be in our beginning talks about this, we talked about the journey, right, that you were on and the journey I was on, and it really is what brought us together to really understand. And so, I want to first talk about your journey. So, um, many of those out there know my journey, but I want to I want to talk about your journey. So, share us. Absolutely. Share with us. Absolutely. Thank you for creating this wonderful platform, by the way. I love it, the Founders Corner. Um, so uh, I'm a seven-year triple negative breast cancer survivor. Uh, there was a lot of breast cancer in my family. Uh, my mother had breast cancer. Her mother had breast cancer. My grandma's sister had breast cancer. My grandma's sister's daughter had breast cancer. Oh, On the left scary. breast. Scary. Scary. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, my mom was always diligent about her health, and she... Uh, she just kept saying, Melissa, you really should get tested for the BRCA gene. And uh, when I was 32, I was tested. And I always said to myself that even if I had the gene, I wouldn't look at it as a diagnosis. I would look at it as a roadmap to my health. Knowledge is power, right? Yeah. Uh, so when I found out that I was BRCA positive, uh, it was strongly suggested that I have uh, a mammogram, MRI, and clinicals. You know, so I was always at the hospital for some reason every couple of months being very closely monitored. And uh, finally, I was told that by the time I was 40, I would have to have my ovaries removed because this would reduce my chances significantly. Wow. So here I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing yoga, I'm eating kale, I'm sacrificing my ovaries, I'm not getting breast cancer. So um, seven years ago when I was about, when I was 41, um, 42, <laughs> can't do math. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going for a uh, standard. Wait a I thought you were 35. Thank you. Well, it's these products. You're that <laughs> you are so beautiful. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was, you know, was going just for, a, it was a busy day. I'm a fashion and beauty publicist by trade. So I remember specifically on this day, I was working with a luxury watch brand. I was on my phone, like, oh my God, I have to text Vogue. Like they're supposed to pick up these watches. And meanwhile, the waiting room is filling up in the breast center and I'm waiting and I just wanted to get out of there. Sort of like dry cleaner, mammogram, pick up the kids, check, check, check. So you and were really proactive with this. Super pro really pro yeah. proactive. And uh, I went, and now, when, you know, I, mind you, when I went in for this mammogram, I had just gone for a clinical exam at a, a big hospital in New York. And I thought there's no, you know, what are they really looking for? Like it was almost a bother at this point. Mm -hmm. And the clinician said, you know, we have to do a, 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 a clinical first. They feel your breast for lungs. And I was like, no, I just had that. She was like, well, you're here for a mammogram. This is just, you know, part of what we do, it's protocol. So she immediately felt a little tiny lump in my left breast, which I didn't even feel. It didn't show up on the mammogram. It did not show up on the ultrasound. Uh, but they, long story short, they did a new, deep needle biopsy that very same day, and I was told that I had breast cancer. Wow. And that's when wow. it's like, you, know, you see the movie where like the, everything's happening, and I was just like, this, first of all, I thought, this is not happening to me. It must be a mistake. It must be a different weird cancer thing that I'm not getting. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's, that's, I, I, I wanted to say, I remember that moment I was diagnosed and they gave me the news and the feeling of it is so deep and it's so almost an unreal feeling. And it's, it's like, something out of body, you really, right? right. It's like, yeah, that's a great way to say the out of body experience. And you always remember too, where you were when you got the diagnosis. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Right. And, uh, 
but you were so proactive, which is not everybody's so proactive like that, even though people told you, and it might've been like an obvious proactive, but some people just don't go that extreme. And so for those listening to us, you know, today and being with us today, I mean, I would think that's one of, one of our messages here is that being proactive, right? Absolutely. Knowledge is power. And, you know, I have teenage daughters and, you know, I, I don't want to bang the breast cancer thing over their head, but guess what? You know, they're teenagers now. We are going to have to get tested sooner rather than later and yeah. make the decisions that we need to make. Um, that's the reality. Yeah. So uh, once I knew what my diagnosis was and I knew what my course of treatment was, which was very intense chemotherapy and uh, a bilateral mastectomy, now let's dial back a minute. I'm a fashion and a beauty publicist. I was going to fashion shows, doing photo shoots, meeting with beauty editors. And yeah. so I thought to myself, I don't need to look like a supermodel while I'm going through this, but I just want to look like myself. Yeah. So I hit the internet and I thought, okay, there's got to be like a vogue of breast cancer. Where are the, the, the cool post mastectomy bras, the fabulous lashes, the wigs? And nothing was all in one place. And I was like, so a friend so of mine... So this is actually where it always started for you, right? When you started yeah, thinking, I have to embrace it. So, so continue. I, I just absolutely. wanted to. Yeah, completely. So I started with this list and a, fr a dear friend of mine, Tina, who at the time was doing like a lot of, you know, social media work and blog design was like, she has a British accent. She was like, <laughs> who ought to start a blog? And I'm like, Tina, I can't even fry. This is in the middle of chemo. I'm like, I can't even fry an egg. I'm going to start a blog. And I did. Because that's what we do, right? That's what we do. That so phenomenal. That's so I phenomenal. Really, I, it was so just, okay, a list. All right, let me put it on a blog. I guess I should maybe post something on Instagram. And I guess I should do Facebook. And then before I knew it, I had people like even in my town that were like, hey, cancer fashionista. And I was like, what? <laughs> you People are actually watching and then what really um kind of blew me away this past year is that uh I, I realized that and i hate using the word influencer but as advocates we do uh bring information and research mm -hmm. to the masses and what really blew me away about what i do for cancer fashionista is a woman that i don't even know uh in dallas reached out to me and said she saw me on a panel um for the air foundation and they helped raise money and that can't afford breast reconstruction. She sent me a direct message on Instagram and said, thank you for posting the, about the Ayers Foundation. I actually applied for a grant and I'm getting money to get my breasts reconstructed. And that's when I was like, whoa, whoa. Wow, like I, what impact. So, so whatever I talk about on my platform or in real life for that matter, I don't talk about anything unless I've used it myself and that, or unless I've experienced it myself. And, uh, it's just the community. I just, I just, I treasure them and I respect them so much. It's like a family and I, and I, I just love being able to share new resources with them on the daily. So, so tell me then what, tell me how cancer fashionista works and how people, what do they need to know most about, you know, uh, cancer fashionista. Absolutely. So basically, I like to consider myself the vogue of breast cancer, and I help women look and feel their best throughout their breast cancer journey and beyond. So uh, I love, I love beauty. I've always loved skincare, makeup. Ever since I was a little kid, I don't know if you remember Charlie makeup. Oh yeah. From the oh, Charlie. Well, Charlie the fragrance. But my mother, I'll never forget. She wore the fragrance. Yeah. But like as a little girl, I remember she. It was the first time I ever saw an eyeshadow palette. I used to watch her like with the colors and just like, I just, this was before Instagram. One day. <laughs> I just loved it. And I, I love, I love fashion. I studied fashion design at Marist College. I was a fashion design major. And um, so I, I just report on fashion and beauty and lifestyle products, resources, and experts uh, that help women look and feel their best, not just through treatment, but you know, I'm seven years out. I still love fashion. I love beauty. I'm a woman. Yeah. Get yeah. To me. No? Yeah. Make me look, yeah. feel great. Organically. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think that's really a key here. I mean, having been through the chemo, losing my hair, and, you know, I'll never forget walking. Um, I was at, uh, doing some business with Nordstrom, and I was walking through the store to going to the office, and I had no, I was bald, and I was dressed up, and had my makeup on, and, and um, 
people, people were going like, whoa, you look fabulous. And I'm thinking to myself, did they think I look fabulous because I had cancer or I look fabulous because I just look like, you know, a woman who decided to have a shaved head. <laughs> right? All I knew is that they said I look fabulous and that made me feel good. So I was happy that I, oh, you know. Karen, I just, this, you, you've had quite a, a journey yourself. So, uh, you know, I just want to take a moment to recognize that. And thank you for all that you're doing for us now with your beautiful products. Well, thank you so much. You know, when we when we get started talking and we were talking about, you know, all the skincare brands out there and, you know, how do you focus in on one skincare brand? I was so excited to get you, um, I mean, ecology to, to try, to feel. And, and it's one thing to talk about it, but it was another thing to actually try it, right? Absolutely. Um, I just want to, I want to talk a little bit about your journey with that. That was, it's been such an amazing uh, journey for you with, with immunology. Oh, no, it's been amazing. And, and in fact, you know, like we were talking and, and I, I, I mean, and I said to you, I don't want, I am tired. I'm 49 years old. I don't want to look at any more skincare brands. I want to land on one and be done with it because I really, I love, I think if you're, you know, if you're, if you connect with a brand and the products work for you, I think, you know, you can probably attest to it to keep switching and not good for your skin. And even as a, you know, someone that tries different brands all the time, that's probably not even good in and of itself so for me to be sampling right. all the products. So I think this is one area where I really want to kind of stay put. And I have to say, I've uh, been enjoying <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 yes. uh, sampler, um, and actually, yeah, I'm really, really loving them, and I'm um, enjoying learning about your products. And uh, what's great is that it's not there's a, there's not a tremendous amount to learn. It's pretty simple, and it's just a matter of like mm -hmm. we do have so many products, so I think it's a matter of figuring out what works for you. But I'm yeah. sure I have a good time doing that. Well, that's why I thought the, the the actually deluxe sample kit that we have that you got is a great, great way for people to really experience it and then find out you know, just kind of what works for them and how to tweak it. And then, you know, for us to be able to talk through how the products work for you and what you're feeling that you need. Um, and that was why I did that because I thought that, you know, it, it, we don't need a lot of products. What we need is what's best for us. Right. And that's what I was thinking about with you. What I love about immune ecology too uh, is that I feel even without having tried the products to me it looks like it would and, and you could attest to this you marry luxury with clean beauty which yes. what you don't have to have one without the other because I was yes. I was like I was raised by my mother as a clinic girl like it was almost right <laughs> of passage that when I was 13 it was like we're going to clinic because they have a bonus remember the, bon I know, <laughs> the bonus you know, oh my tone yes. Dries, and that was, you know, how I was raised. Uh, so I love that now, you know, fast forward, I feel like the beauty industry, it gives us, we're, we're empowered. There are so many choices and we can now, you know, find products that are, have beautiful packaging, have all the judge of like the, the department for a bit, but it's clean and it's good for you and it lasts a long time. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we know we, we actually, it's more condensed and one of the things also is when you're like the cleansing bottle or our mask, they're, they're 3.4 ounce sizes when mostly in most brands you're getting the 1.7. So right. it does last longer. It almost lasts two times longer, three times longer than most brands out there. And Although I have to say, I'm <laughs> grateful. I'm scraping. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I better, better order more. <laughs> <laughs> more, more to come. Well, well, you know, even with our jar, you know, it's so funny because I always think about how um, you know, I've been using this and this is, a, this happens to be the night protection, but I always find just that little bit. And so it lasts a little bit longer than most products because that little bit, and that's why you've been able to use that deluxe sample for, <laughs> for weeks I'm now. Milking, Karen, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm definitely milking it. And I love this. Uh, the, the, you know, when I spoke to one of your representatives about the product, um, I said to her, because this is like a common thing, like when you wake up in the morning and you're going to go to work out, like, do you wash your face? Like, then wash your face again. She was like, she just kept saying, I don't use this mist. And I love yes. this. Yes. I don't know what's in yes. it. 
<laughs> it makes me feel great. <laughs> well, that, uh, you know, the vital ionic mist is something that was really fascinating because I thought, you know, there's so many mists in the market, right? But what makes ours different? And it is actually the clay, right? The French green clay. And the French green clay is Montemarillonite clay. So it's a combination of kaolin and bentonite clay and also lava. Right, so you bring those together. Yes, there you got it. Oh my gosh, it's so. I, I don't like to make more work today. I just even the smell. It's like it's like <laughs> it's a little escape in a in a. It's, it's, and it's just the way it kind of comes together. And so that clay water is actually in all of our products, but that's our delivery system. That's what really, you know, just being both of us being cancer survivors. One of the things that's been really important for me is this clay water brings minerals to the skin so it's like a drink for the skin it's food for the skin and the skin being the largest organ of our body um you know you, both of us have been so conscious about what we need to do going forward and when i put this together it's really thinking about people like yourself how do i help I, I mean, I, I can't just be with Melissa. I don't know where she is in the world, right? And we find each other. But I needed to have something that as a, a skincare industry um, expert and being in the industry of my whole career, how can I make a difference for all of us and not just one group of women, but women from all ages, all walks of life, but also those who also have had some issues. And I think when I say that is that, you know, from cancer to other medical conditions, one thing that I always say is skin is skin. It's how we treat our skin. And so what we get back is what we put on, right? Just like our gut. Absolutely. And, and so that's what to me is so important. And, and that, you know, and seeing you and seeing your skin glowing like that is so fantastic. Oh, thank you. I really feel also, I, you know, we hear so much about self-care, so, you know, Self-care Sunday, da, 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 you know, all the hashtags. But, you know, we do need to take care of ourselves, not just on Sundays or Saturdays, but every day. And I feel like um, I really enjoy this at the end of the day and also the start of my day because I feel like it's a reminder to take good care of yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, when you meet, and when you're meeting up with different uh, members and people that are in your um, network, you know, what are some of the things that, you know, you find that they're looking at? I mean, you're, you're very much on top of things and on, on yourself as well as being um, focused on information and education. You know, what, what can we do to help them through your network to help them with what some of their needs are? What, what can we do to help them together? And maybe some of the messaging that we can help them with too. Absolutely. I think, um, I think for a lot of women, like the idea of clean beauty, it, it could still be intimidating to the, to, to like a lot of women. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and it could also mean that it's too expensive. So I, mm -hmm. I think what I'd like to do is kind of t take that misconception off the table and demystify the whole clean beauty skincare routine, because even though you might be spending more on a product like this, it's actually going to last a whole lot longer. So it actually ends up, ends up being the same uh, mm -hmm. as buying you know, the drugstore stuff. And I think um, just sort yeah. of also educating them about what they can and cannot use, obviously checking with their doctors first, but yeah. throughout chemo, throughout radiation. And the truth of the matter is, we've talked about this before, we're women. You know, <laughs> we're not <laughs> aliens when we're going through chemo. I mean, the truth yeah. is, you yeah. do need to careful because your skin does change and yeah. and how your skin receives things does change but i'm sure you can uh, would you like for example you would probably say the cleansing lotion anybody can use my uh, probably my year old niece could probably use it yes it, it, and that's why i did this is because you know i wanted to keep it simple for us um whether you know we are going through treatment get diagnosed with cancer I wanted it something that was going to balance the skin's microbiome, right? And I had to have something that had didn't have any of those um, bad ingredients in it, but something that was going to be safe but effective. And that's one of the reasons why, even though it's it looks beautiful, you know, and it's in glass, which helps to preserve it. But I wanted something that was clean but luxurious. Luxurious doesn't have to mean that it has to be overly extensive either, but luxury is about how we feel, and we all love to be part of that, just, you know, having something that's beautiful and, and clean, and, and so I wanted that to be our message. I wanted that to be for me to all of you out there, and, and, and especially 
Melissa, as you've seen with this, keeping it simple. So the cleanser is something that it's for all skin types. And what happens is, is that we call it um, adsorption and absorption, and it's called balance. So going back to that one word, skin's microbiome, it's like the gut. The gut needs to be balanced. If the gut is out of balance, your body's out of balance. Your skin's out of balance, right? So I wanted to be able to get into that place, and the cleanser being the first step in the routine is important because we want to get rid of the dirt, the debris that builds up on our skin, and then but not strip it away. And so many things that have sodium lauryl uh, sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate in it, or any kind of um, those harsh chemicals strip the skin, then the skin wants to rebuild. And when we're going through treatments like cancer, the skin is so sensitive. I wanted it to be gentle also. So that's why I made it so that it can be for all skin types. Because the most important thing is getting rid of that, whatever's on the surface from the environment, pollution, you know, makeup, um, dead skin cells, just get that removed and get to a fresher skin. And, and it feels so refresh on the skin, doesn't it? It really does. It's, it's wonderful. And what I love too is that I'm learning, uh, you know, we had a fun little uh, tutorial yesterday uh, yeah. that all of your products are sort of multitaskers. So yes. Uh, that's that's really awesome too. You know, like the face serum, I love, but uh, because I wear crazy eyelashes with glue, <laughs> uh, it's actually really good for removing that. <laughs> so, so one of the things that I will tell you though is that as they are multitaskers, you know, the, we talk about the cleanser. By the way, you can cleanse the skin, remove it with nice lukewarm water spray it with that mist that you have there, the vital clay mist, and then use it as a moisturizer. It's like amazing. The, the, the cleanser you can also use as a moisturizer. Oh, yes. well now I really need a lot more. Hint, hint. <laughs> and so, the, but this is another thing that's phenomenal is that you could take the cleansing lotion, take a little bit of that clay, the vital clay, mix it uh -huh. together, and now you have a creamy clay cleanser for someone who might have a little more oily skin. Oh, this even with the vital clay and the cleansing lotion? Yeah, yeah, you're mixing it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm mixing it right now. And what is and this? Show them what it looks like. So this is becomes, it feel, it, feel, feel it like it has a little bit of grit to it. Yeah. And so it's a, it becomes a creamy cleanser. Ooh. So you, doesn't lovely. that feel great? Isn't that a great consistency? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So you mix the clay with the with the cleansing lotion and then it just makes a more like sort of a creamier. I mean, yeah. And then well, it gives you a little scrub. It gives you a hours to wash my face so badly. <laughs> I know that's what happens to me all the time. Oh my god. <laughs> it smells very spa. I love it. It's like a little vacation. You know, that's you know, that's why we have, what we have to do is we get, get some of your women together and let's do like a, a night where we just do our own faces together and I'll show you some tips on that. Wouldn't it be fun? Yeah. I think that would be a really fun thing to do. But isn't that a great feeling when you mix those two together? It really is lovely. I can't wait to do yeah. it tonight. <laughs> now what happens if you mix it, the, the mask with the cleansing lotion and you keep it on as a mask? It probably won't really work because if the mask is diluted. Well, it is, but it will work because what you're doing is then getting the hydration on the skin. So it helps, oh. to, pump, helps to pump the skin and Beautiful. the clay. So that's what we have, what we call the adsorption and absorption. It pulls out the toxins and then it will bring in the water and the hydration to the skin with the minerals oh, and the vitamins. Oh my God, no, I'm sorry. This is great. <laughs> so, well, I'm excited to do that. And, you know, so what kind of things do you have coming up? I mean, throughout the year, you have different things. And next month, right, is, I mean, well, actually, I should say this month. It's I know, October, <laughs> October. I know, it's wild, right? Um, so this October, I'm really excited because I'm going to be shining the spotlight on what I call cancer premiers. And, and you're one of them, obviously. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm going to be doing Instagram Lives, Facebook Lives, blog posts, uh, all kinds of information, uh, but I'll be interviewing women that have created a product or service as a result of their breast cancer experience or cancer experience in your case. And uh, I just, I just love, I love new products and I love supporting other entrepreneurs. So I thought it'd be a great way to celebrate October. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so I guess I'll get to see you again. <laughs> uh, <it's fine. laughs> 
no idea what I have planned for you. Absolutely. Oh, oh I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. That's always a nice surprise. Well, I have to say, this has been so incredible and there's so much more to talk about. So I want to have you come back. Um, I know we're going to do this many, many times over, but you know, I really wanted to put cancer fashionista in a place where people get to know more about it and i know so many people ask me different things about do i know different organizations that they could get involved with and um i love yours so i wanted to be able to share this with everyone and and if anyone's having I just want to say that, you know, anyone in any area of the cancer life, whether it be someone that um, has been diagnosed or you've been diagnosed, you know, you have to reach out. You really have to reach out to Melissa and Thank Cancer you. Fashionista. So, uh, you know, because I think you bring so much to the table that, that there, that's that been missing. And I think that, you know, being a beauty editor probably certainly helped you. But I think part of that is having that compassion that you have and you want to be there to help others and and together i i really look forward to being able to do that and 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 be able to work with women to to be there to support them and just to know that that we understand i think is so important in in helping them with this education of what Absolutely. we go through thank you for creating this platform like i always say you know not just breast cancer but any cancer any illness for that matter could be very defeminizing you know when you lose your hair and your mm -hmm. breast I, there are way too many women that I that I uh, hear say, you know, I don't feel like a woman anymore, and that that gets me going I'm, on yes. so many levels. So I'm really here to help women uh, retain their femininity, no matter what. And yes. I think what you uh, bring is something that uh, certainly is, is is part of that conversation, which is taking really super great care of your skin and everything that goes on your skin goes in your body. So. Well, thank you so much. And, and if anyone ever wants to have a consultation, you know, we have those available. Um, and Melissa, you can help them as well. And you can guide them and anything that we can do to help. So we're here to support you in this. So I just want to say thank, thank you, you say. so much for being with me today. And, and again, we'll do this many more times. And we have a lot, a lot of, I want to say just a lot more that's uh, going to be happening throughout the year. So I'm excited Wonderful. about that. So. I'll be watching. I love your product. Yeah. Thanks for all you do. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for being on the journey with me. And Absolutely. one last, one last thing I have to ask you. Yeah. I always love to end with, if you could just, whether it be your, the inspiration of past uh, cancer fashionista or just where you are, just some, some uh, words of wisdom that you want to share with everyone today. You know, one, one piece of wisdom I always like to share is that time is your only inventory. And to use it wisely, whether it's with the family, friends, business, you know, I think especially now uh, with all that's going on, there's so much uncertainty. So uh, use your time wisely and make sure that you're um, giving back to yourself, that you're taking good care of yourself. Well said, I must say that is beautiful. Thank you. Thank My you pleasure. for sharing that with us. Absolutely. We will, we will see you soon. You bet. Thank you. Ma. Thank you so much. Ma.